Today's inside look at the Raiders week one matchup against the Chargers is presented by Panda Subs. Use code Raiders for 25% off all their workout supplements. Those links are going to be available to you all down in the comments and in the description of today's show. Raider Nation, what's going on? It's Mitchell Renz here, and welcome to Inside Look. Every week, I'm going to sit down with the host of the team that the Raiders are going to be playing, and I'm going to figure out what the biggest storylines are for the opposing team. We're going to look at the biggest strengths, the biggest weaknesses, and how the Raiders can beat them. I also say this, you better pull up to our watch party, Raiders Chargers. Hit that subscribe button on Sunday. We're giving away a signed Max Crosby jersey. Now, usually every single week, I'm able to sit down during our Vikings game. I sat down with our Vikings host. Cowboys sat down with our Cowboys host. I've been able to sit down with every single host. The problem is I'm not even sure if Chargers fans actually exist. I looked far and wide. I couldn't find a single one. So if you watch this show, if you want to share this to a Chargers fan so I know they exist because I'm not 100% sure they do exist. I remember the NFL tried to tell me that this lady here, she's probably a nice lady, was a Chargers fan. I don't think that she actually is. So if anybody could please help me find a Chargers fan, that would be great. Or if you're like me, I think, honestly, Chargers fans are kind of like Bigfoot, which somebody's going to be like, Bigfoot's real, dude. Bigfoot might be more real. I've probably seen more Bigfoot walking around than I have Chargers fans. And if you don't think Chargers fans are real, I want you to smash that like button. Y'all better take over SoFi Stadium. Black that thing out. So coming up here, we're going to get into the Chargers storylines against the Las Vegas Raiders. And this is from... Chargers.com because, I mean, that's all I could find. I'm not going to lie to y'all. Chargers.com broke down some of their biggest storylines. And I'm going to tell you, if I'm the Raiders, how we go out there and how we make sure that those things don't happen. One of the first storylines here for the Chargers is, what does the team look like with brand new head coach Jim Harbaugh? I mean, we talked about the Raiders were the worst head coach team last season with Josh McDaniels. A very close second <laughs> was the Los Angeles Chargers, and you got to give Harbaugh his credit, right? Like, Harbaugh was a guy that I wanted the Raiders to hire. I'll admit that I absolutely agree that Antonio Pierce was the right guy for the job, but watching what this team looks like with Harbaugh, I think is a lot different than what people think. So this is according to Chargers.com. The Jim Harbaugh era is here, and the Chargers head coach has installed a new attitude and mindset that has permeated throughout the roster. Offensively, the Bolts want to run the ball and set the tone in the trenches. Yes, they still have Justin Herbert at QB. But imagine the all-world quarterback with a bruising running game and an offensive line that can help keep him upright in the pocket. If I'm the Raiders and I see that, and I agree with it, like, you have Harbaugh. He's going to be an old-school-minded dude who wants to rely on his defense, wants to run the rock. Then they go out, they find themselves a nice little dude who, you know, Greg Roman, he wants to run the football a lot. If I'm the Raiders, I'm looking at John Jenkins, Christian Wilkins, Nesta Jade Silvera, Adam Butler, and Lalu, and I'm going, hey, this is an opportunity for you guys to plug up the middle here and really make life difficult on that Chargers offense. Because if you make them one-dimensional with the receivers that they have, they're going to struggle a little bit. I'm also going to be looking at Max Crosby and Malcolm Koontz to get some pressure on the edge. But that also means guys like a Tyree Wilson needs to be fresh. Janarius Robinson needs to be fresh. The Chargers are going to play a physical brand of football, and we need our defensive line, all the players, to step up and be ready to go. Let's have a fun question, though, because the amount of times I heard the Raiders should have hired Jim Harbaugh over Antonio Pierce because of the resume. Everybody starts out with a blank resume. Harbaugh started out with a blank resume. Bill Belichick started out with a blank resume. It doesn't matter who you are as a head coach. You started out with a blank resume. So Let's have a fun little debate here. Who's going to have more wins this season as a head coach? Do you think it's going to be Antonio Pierce? You think it's going to be Jim Harbaugh? You already know where I'm going. Give me that AP down below. Let's go to the Chargers' second storyline. Who steps up at wide receiver? There's a lot of different faces here for the Chargers. And I actually think that low-key, this is one of those stories that has not been talked about nearly enough. And this is what the Chargers had to say about it. This is the position group that enters the 2024 season with perhaps the most approved. With the three most targeted players from a season ago no longer on the roster, the Bolts will need someone from this group to step up. Joshua Palmer is entering year four with the Chargers and already has a built-in rapport with Herbert. DJ Chark is a veteran who brings size and athleticism. Quentin Johnson could be a name to watch here. The 2023 first-round pick endured an up-and-down rookie season, but flashed in training camp and looks like a much-improved player. 
The Bolts also have a pair of rookies on the roster in second round pick Lad McConkey and seventh rounder Brendan Rice. Watch for McConkey to be a third down option for Herbert due to his quickness and route running ability. And I 100% agree with that. If I'm the Raiders, the one guy that I am really concerned about is McConkey because when you look at the past seasons where the Raiders have struggled, they've struggled against the receiver like Keenan Allen, who's not overly athletic, but just a extremely good route runner. And that's what McConkey is. So I'm looking at Nate Hobbs. Nate Hobbs, I'm looking at you right now, and I need you to be able to step up to the job and get it done. Jack Jones, I need you to be able to lock guys up on the outside. I'd love another one-handed pick six. Ja'Cory Bennett, if you get an opportunity, go out there. Show that you're not afraid. Show that you're going to be athletic. But I do think the Raiders here, if they're able to get some pressure, bring it four, bring it five, that's going to help out these corners a lot. But I also think because of the wide receivers, if I'm the Raiders, I don't need to blitz too much. I am confident that we're going to be able to get pressure with four and five. Drop our guys back and win those matchups. Let's go to the third storyline here for the Chargers. How much havoc does this defense create? And we saw a lot last season. Let's not get it twisted. Seven sacks against the Raiders was a tough one to swallow. Khalil Mack had six of them. Aiden O'Connell was a statue back there in the pocket. And we need to protect better, but we also need a quarterback that knows how to have a little bit more pocket awareness. Chargers.com said this. If you watch any of the Bolts' three preseason games, you probably notice that Chargers defensive coordinator, Jesse Minter, likes to bring the heat on opposing quarterbacks. The Chargers defense tallied seven sacks in preseason play. That was without their heavy hitters on the field. But the real fun will be to track how Minter employs the edge rusher group of Khalil Mack, Joey Bosa, to Tui Pelotu, Bud Dupree, Mack, Bosa, Tui Pelotu were on the field together for 44 plays last season. The Chargers tallied 10 combined sacks on those plays. If it's third and long, look for Minter to dial up the pressure by using an elite stable of edge rushers at this position. So you got Colton Miller, you got there Munford. We cannot have another situation like we did last season where our tackles are getting beat as often as what they were. Now, that's also, I think, to do with Josh McDaniels being a horrific head coach because after the game, McDaniels was asked what he thought he did well to try to, you know, slow down Mack, and he's like, oh, I thought we did a good job double-teaming him. They double-teamed him two times out of 62 snaps. So it's just McDaniels just showing that he's got no idea what's going on. But Colt Miller, I got confidence in. You know, it's a big game right here. And I mean a big game for Thayer Mumford to be able to prove that he's the right guy for the job. And if he's unable to get it done, I got a lot of confidence in DJ Glaze to be able to go out there and get it done. Bottom line is we could talk about Gardner Minshew. You could talk about all these guys. Aiden O'Connell, you could talk about Devontae Adams. Doesn't matter. If you don't block, the Raiders will not win this game. And if I'm Las Vegas, not only am I going to rely on my offensive line, I'm going to try to run the ball a little bit more effectively, take some pressure off of those guys. Coming up here, let's look at some of the Chargers' strengths and weaknesses. We're going to look at both sides of the football, and then I'm going to break down the keys to victory. Because to me, if the Raiders want to win this game, you're going to have to do the little things really, really well. So AP Telesco, hopefully you watch this show, and hopefully we bring home a dub this upcoming Sunday. Before I get into all that, though, I got to give a shout out to Panda Subs. They've been a loyal sponsor here for three, four years at this point, owned by a diehard Raider fan. And if you use code Raiders, you're going to be able to get 25% off at pandasubs.com. I've spoke at great lengths about the pro team, but I do want to tell you guys about the collagen. And I reason why is because I know a lot of guys that watch this show. If you're like me, I don't actually usually just buy things just for me. I usually buy something for me that I can also get my fiance Alex, but I've also been using the collagen. Why? Helps out with fingernails. If you have some skin issues, it can help you out with making your skin look a lot healthier. If you're trying to grow your hair out or have healthier hair, it can also have that involved. So to me, healthy hair, healthy fingernails, all that kind of good stuff, Panda Subs can help do that. On top of that, it can also help you get into better shape. So if you want to get hooked up here, use code Raiders for 25% off at pandasups.com. If you also need some of that extra motivation to hit the gym, their new pre-workout, uh, pre the Blue Snow Cone. I, I'll tell you this right now. I'm not the biggest fan of pre-workout because a lot of times I wake up at 6 o'clock in the morning, 6.30, and having something like that in the morning isn't easy. I love this new Blue Snow Cone. I'm just telling you that right now. And everybody that purchases through Code Raiders at pandasups.com, you also get this. You're going to draw a string bag. You get an awesome panda shaker, and then you can also try out two of their other pre-workout packets where I am a big person. Like, if I 
never had something before I go spend a lot of money on something, I at least would like to try it out. Their pre-workout has really helped me lose some weight. And if you don't believe me, you can go look at the pictures for me from last season. I know when football season rolls around, I always put on a few LBs, but I'm I'm going to try to keep some of that off this season, and Panda's going to help me do that. So if you're like Mitch, hey, man, I party with you during watch parties. Hey, Mitch, I, I rock with you guys on Thursday game days. I'm putting my body on the line just like you and Chugs. Also take care of yourself. PandaSup's going to help you do that. PandaSups.com, code Raiders. All right, let's get into some of these Chargers' strengths and weaknesses and just how we're going to combat that with some keys to victory here. The first thing that we're going to be looking at, though, and I think the first thing that you got to look at is the strengths. And the Chargers, their offensive tackles, they're maybe the two best offensive tackle duo in the league. I think Rashawn Slater is one of the best in the biz. I also think that Joe Alt, he was my highest graded tackle. The fact that you got Slater playing on the left side did allow three sacks, but still, like, he is a high-level offensive tackle. I, 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 If you were to ask me Rashawn Slater or Colton Miller, I'm taking Rashawn Slater, all right? And that's not a knock on Miller. It's just that's where he's at. If you were to ask me Colton Miller or Joe Olt over the next three seasons, I'll take Joe Olt. If you're asking me for this year, I'll take Colton Miller. But I'm just going out there and I'm trying to explain to you how talented both of those guys are, and they are. They're going to try to do everything in their power to make sure that he's upright. So Max Crosby, Malcolm Coots, I'm not necessarily worried about those guys as much, but they need to be able to win those one-on-ones, and especially for a guy like Malcolm Coots. He needs to go out and prove that he can win that matchup because Max is going to do his thing. Christian Wilkins is going to bring on a double team. If either Malcolm, Tyree, or Janarius can prove that they can just help out on a few extra snaps, I think it's really going to open the eyes here for this Raiders defense. Let's go to the next thing that the Chargers do really well. They're edge rushers. They got a lot of guys that can get after the quarterback. And when you have a team that we do with the offensive line right now, I have confidence in the offensive line, but there's some question marks around it. You can't really deny that. And then you got Gardner Minshew, who, you know, isn't the most mobile quarterback, isn't the best quarterback out there, but needs to be protected like any quarterback does. Khalil Mack had six sacks against us last season. That can't happen again. I'll admit that. I would say three of those are on the offensive line. The other three sacks were 100% on Aiden O'Connell's inability to feel pressure. Another player who's coming off a little bit of a down year, six and a half sacks, is Joey Bosa. I mean, when he's healthy... He's healthy right now. He's one of the best in the biz, so being able to limit him is really important. Another player that the Chargers added was Bud Dupree. He had six and a half sacks last season. They're going to be a team with Mintra. It's going to bring a lot of pressure. So our offensive line needs to make sure that it does a good job being able to hold up to that pressure. I also think that our offensive coordinator, Luke Getze, needs to do a good job of if, hey, you got to put in Alexander Madison, our best pass blocking bat to, to chip a little bit, do that. If you need to run the rock with Zamir White to take a little bit of pressure off those guys being able to bring the edges, that's something you need to do. I can't even believe I'm going to say this. If you want to do third down in Abdullah, a little screen action, I'm okay with it. You got to figure out ways to take pressure off, and you got to be able to figure out ways to tire out those edge guys and instead of them pinning their ears back going out and getting you. Let them think for a second, because if you think for a second in the NFL, it's already too late. Let's go to the next strength here. I know Raider fans don't agree with this one. But Justin Herbert's one of the best quarterbacks in the NFL. He doesn't have the win-losses probably that a lot of QBs with his talent have. And he's choked on some major games, right? I mean, you blow a 29 to nothing lead, that's a tough one. But from a talent standpoint alone, Justin Herbert has got it. Like, he's got the arm strength. He's got the legs. He can beat you in a lot of different ways. And I'm almost wondering, was it a Chargers problem or was it a Justin Herbert problem? And it's probably a little bit of a mix of both. But for the Raiders, you got to get after him. This is somebody who's been battling plantar fascia the entire offseason. And, you know, there were some questions whether or not he'd be ready to go week one. He's cleared to play. He's good to go. But I guarantee you this, the one thing that the Chargers don't want is Justin Herbert running for his life. And if Herbert turns the ball over, the Chargers are going to be a team that's going to be in trouble. They want to play with the lead. They want to run the football. And if the Raiders get a lead, that's where they can be really dangerous in 12 personnel. The Chargers last season were 1-5. When Herbert threw an interception, I'll admit the one game that they won with Herbert starting when he threw a pick was against the Raiders. But I think everybody that's sitting up here right now watching the show goes that Chargers team, the Raiders team that the Chargers played when Josh McDaniels was the head coach compared to the Raiders team that the, that played the Chargers on Thursday night, that Antonio Pierce coach was very, very different. 
So we talk about Herbert here. Let's also talk about our quarterback, Gardner Minshew. And if you're playing fantasy football, probably want to start Justin Herbert over Gardner Minshew, and you probably shouldn't even think about it. But I've also been doing this for a long time, and I know just what you think is going to happen doesn't always happen. Who do you think is going to have a better game? And I want you to think of this from a fantasy football standpoint. Are you going to go with Gardner Minshew type GM, or are you going to go with Justin Herbert? I want you to type JH. As much as I want to sit up here and say it's Gardner Minshew, from a fantasy football standpoint, I will put my money on Justin Herbert. But I actually think it's going to be a lot closer than what people realize. The Raiders' defense is much better than the Chargers' defense. Let's go to some of the Chargers' weaknesses now and how the Raiders can take advantage of this. The first one is the pass catchers. And we talked a little bit about the wide receivers early on. Guess what? The tight end situation for the Chargers is also not very good. Gerald Everett, he ended up leaving. He's no longer a member of this team. If I'm the Raiders, I'm bringing four, I'm bringing five, and I'm going to drop my guys back, and we're going to get pressure, not pressure sacks, we're going to get coverage sacks a lot more often just because they're not going to have guys that can beat our player. Quentin Johnson, I think he stinks. The only guy that I'm worried about legitimately is Ladd McConkey on a basis just because I think he's the biggest mismatch, and he's a receiver that I do think Justin Herbert could link up with a lot because he's a good route runner because he's a lesser version of Keenan Allen, one of the reasons why they went out and got him. But pass catchers, the Raiders should dominate. Bring four, bring five, you're going to be just fine. Let's go to another weakness here that the Chargers have. Christian Fulton and Jasur Taylor. When you look at their five DBs that start here for the Chargers on a normal basis, the guy that usually lines up on the left side is Asante Samuel. Their strong safety is Derwin James. Free safety, Aloe Gilman, who was actually a player that I thought the Raiders could potentially target this offseason. And then you got Christian Fulton and Jasir Taylor. If you're Luke Getze, where are you going with the football? I can tell you. I'm either going to go in the slot with Jasir Taylor or I'm going to target Christian Fulton. If you want to put Devontae Adams on Asante Samuel and let him cook there, Devontae is going to be more than okay in that matchup. Maybe you put your tight ends on Derwin James, see how that one unfolds. My bottom line is this. If it's like a third down and five, I usually sit up here all the time and I go third down and five, like, hey, let's target number 17. If it's third down and five or a must-pick-up first down situation and Asante Samuels on Devontae, that's fine. Just know that there's a lot of other matchups that we should be able to win those one-on-ones with. So if I'm the Raiders, I would have Trey Tucker maybe do a little pre-snap motion and then get Jacoby in a one-on-one. Get Brock Bowers in a one-on-one. Get Michael Mayer in a one-on-one. And if it's there, you hit him. If not, there's going to be something else open. The Raiders can beat you in a lot of different ways, and those two guys are not going to slow you down. Let's go to the other Chargers' weakness here. It is a million percent that interior offensive line. Their tackles are legit. I will see, though, like if I'm Las Vegas, I want to see Max Crosby up against Joe Wall. I want to see Max baptize a rookie because – I don't think that Joe Walt's gone up against anything like Max Crosby. Crosby's better than Khalil Mack. He's better than Joey Bosa. He's the best edge rusher that Alt's ever gone up against. Let's see how he handles it. But then also from the interior standpoint, according to PFF last season, Zion Johnson, 57.6 PFF grade. Bradley Boozman, 62.2. Trey Pimpkins, the third, who actually played a little bit of right tackle. And I think Max Crosby's the reason why he got kicked into guard. Joe Walt probably helped a little bit too. Alt's 90.7 is from college, so just keep that in mind. But then from the sack numbers allowed last season, the interior offensive line is where the Raiders need to go out and they need to get after. So for a guy like Christian Wilkins, for a guy like Adam Butler, John Jenkins, Tyree Wilson, I'm even looking at you, we need to be able to get out there. We need to show a healthy rotation, and we need to be fresh because they're going to be physical. They're going to run the football a lot. But when they do decide to drop back the pass, or in a little play action, because it's going to happen often. Our guys need to be able to get up the field and make some plays happen. So I'm going to give my prediction for this game. And if anybody hasn't already seen, I put out a video earlier in the week about my Raiders record prediction. If there's any Raiders or Chargers fans that want to watch my Madden simulation for this game, we did it back in May, and it's got Gardner Minshew starting because all along we were like, yeah, this is going to be the guy that starts for the Raiders. I'm going to give you my prediction for this game, but before I do, if you don't know, we got a week one watch party going down this weekend in North Carolina. If you want to attend, it's free to go. Go to chatsports.com slash week one, and this thing's going to be packed. I checked in last week. They right now are somewhere around 100 people expected to go, and that's just without the plus ones. 
This place is going to be packed. Back then, bar and grill, there's going to be food deals there. There's going to be raffle deals there. If you should show up, you have a chance to win some really cool prizes. There's going to be a special guest there. I'm just telling you, you guys are going to have fun with that one. But it's a family-friendly event. If you enjoy what Chugs and I do here on YouTube, why not come hang out with us in person? Chatsports.com slash week one. But only if you want to hang out with Chugs and I this weekend and a bunch of other Raiders fans. So my week one matchup prediction, give me the Raiders to win 24-21. It's going to be a close game. These teams are evenly matched. And I do think whoever gets out to that early lead could benefit because both teams want to try to run the football. Both teams want to go with a balanced attack. If I'm Las Vegas, I want the ball to start this game. I want to set the tone early. We'll see what they end up doing, but give me the Raiders to win 24-21. That's inside look. And I'm telling you right now, Antonio Pierce is going to beat Jim Harbaugh.